What's going on guys? I'm Tyler, and to continue my Studio Ghibli reviews, I'm here to let you know that My Neighbor Totoro is no perfect movie. And My Neighbor Totoro is about a family that moves to the Japanese countryside to visit their sick mother. And for the majority of the film, we see it from the perspective of 11-year-old Satsuki, her younger 4-year-old sister Mei, and these tiny friendly creatures that inhabit the forest behind their house, including this giant king-like spirit who the sisters call Totoro. Now this is arguably one of the most, if not the most, iconic Studio Ghibli films of all time. Totoro himself is the mascot for the studio. He's actually cameoed in a variety of different movies. In fact, there's actually one sequence in Toy Story 3 where he's actually in the background, which is such a cute little factoid, but Pixar founder John Lasseter was just such a fan of Studio Ghibli that he was the one responsible for the Disney re-releases to try and to try and introduce anime to as many different masses as possible, try and get the public eye's interest in anime, and also show that A-list celebrities who we love and adore have different tastes than just the movies that they make in America. So say what you will about John Lasseter as a person, but the stuff that he does for Hayao Miyazaki, getting his films into the public eye as often as possible, I commend him for that. But what's so interesting about this movie is that it has such a minimal story, but so much rich layered themes about environmentalism, about healing from personal tragedy, about not judging a book by its cover, all from the perspective of an 11 and 4 year old girl. And it's just so thoughtful, it's so laid back, but it's also incredibly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it is incredibly complex because rewatching it today, I noticed so many different things about not just the girls themselves becoming more independent and more mature and learning to accept the situation that their mother's in, but you actually see a little bit of character development from Totoro. It, it sounds weird, but it is kind of true. But I do remember this actually being the first Studio Ghibli film that I ever saw back when I binged all of them at once, and I had no idea how I was going to feel about it because movies like Roma and Call Me By Your Name, which also have a very laid back slice of life mentality, I hadn't seen those before, they hadn't been made yet, and I really didn't know how to feel about it, but from the opening intro where you get the Joe Hisashi song, Hey, Let's Go, I was completely on board. I Before I before I forget to mention it until the very end, Joe Hisashi's score in this is so... It's blatantly geared towards kids because of how simplified the music and the lyrics are, but at the same time, the music is just so whimsical, almost in a Sherman Brothers way, that it's really... It's really hard to ignore. It's really hard not to like. I love Hey Let's Go. I love the Totoro song at the very end. The instrumentals that they play over and over again throughout the film make the most mundane montages feel so exhilarating and optimistic and joyful to watch. And it goes without saying, the animation by Hayao Miyazaki is spectacular. It is bright. It is vibrant. It is colorful. I love the watercolor style that he's usually known for, where you have all these bright blue skies with lush white clouds. So many shots of ponds and the reflections that often move and exit out of the frame to make it feel like you are witnessing a random occurrence in life. And that's just the wonderful thing about My Neighbor Totoro. It really does feel like you're watching someone else's normal life. And some people are going to say, well, that sounds boring. Why would you make a movie about it when movies are all about story and structure? Well, the interesting thing is there actually is a subtle structure to the way they portray mundane events. For one, I kept noticing that in every single scene, they never went back to the exact same camera angle to show the exact same camera shot unless there was something just even the slightest detail that was different from the previous shot. For example, that iconic scene where the two girls are sitting at the bus stop and Totoro is there waiting for another bus. You see that initial shot of Satsuki holding Mei and absolutely terrified because she absolutely has no idea what to do while Totoro is just standing there like it's a normal day. And then after she gives him the umbrella, we go back to the exact same shot, except now Satsuki is actually smiling because she knows for a fact that Totoro is very peaceful and gentle and Totoro is so curious and awestruck by this technological advance that he knows absolutely nothing about. But as you discover, once he realizes how fun it is listening to raindrops hit the umbrella hard, the scene changes again to another shot where he's smiling because he realizes what's going on, but Sasuke doesn't, so she goes right back to being terrified. 
And it's a very subtle feature about how you can use the exact same shot to try and bookend and foreshadow future events in the plot. And it's just a great example of how even if life gets really monotonous and repetitive, there's always the slightest detail that always that always changes, that makes every day feel brand new, regardless of whether we realize it or not. And I think another thing that people tend to overlook when they review this movie is that they try to use as few of the exact same locations as possible. They try to spice it up as often as they can to give, it, to give each setting a fresh new look, kind of what I said in my Castle in the Sky review. For example, when May, the little sister, first discovers these spirits for the first time, we get all these camera angles of, of the cellar underneath their house to see these creatures crawling underneath, and you see a point of view from her eyes from inside the cellar as she's looking in, and then once she discovers that they ran into the forest, we see the forest for the first time through this tunnel, but then when she tries to explain Totoro's location to her sister and her father, if suddenly everything's changed. The tunnel's not there anymore. Suddenly it's just a side door to this garden that they had. And it leaves a lot of it leaves a lot of ambiguity and mystery to what type of creature Totoro is. Even there are some people who have speculated that the creatures are in the kids' imaginations. And I can kind of understand where they got that idea. I'm not entirely convinced just because it seems a little too coincidental, but that's another great thing about this movie. It doesn't offer any answers because it knows for a fact that we as an audience can interpret it for ourselves. Now, in regards to the voice acting, the Japanese version is really good. But I would argue that the Disney dub, which was the first one I saw, was a little bit superior just because I really enjoyed the voice actors that they got. They actually had actors who were a lot better at voice acting than James Vanderbeek and Anna Paquin and can actually sound natural even though they were delivering these occasional spoon-fed lines of dialogue. For example, Satsuki and May in the Disney dub were actually played by Dakota and Elle Fanning. And what made it so... What made the two of them so fun to watch was that because they were real-life sisters, they have natural chemistry with each other. And personally... In both versions, as I say this, I prefer May over Satsuki just because May is so much younger. So whenever she sees a magical creature for the first time, she spent her entire time she spent her entire life imagining that seeing these creatures for the first time is just so exhilarating from her perspective, and we really feel it alongside her. She has this natural curiosity that we've all had as kids that we can easily relate to. But Satsuki's also really good. I like the fact that even though she does believe in these creatures, she's not so quick to believe one when Mei explains what Totoro is, and then when she doesn't see any proof, she's not convinced. It, I, at first, I thought it was kind of stupid, but then again, I kind of had the exact same mentality as a kid, and anyone who was an older sibling, like I am, can also relate to having to take up more responsibility trying to look after their younger sibling when they become when they when they're forced to in certain situations like when their father has to work and their mother's sick in the hospital tim daly is also good as playing the father he has this very laid back and patient attitude that every parent of younger kids has to have whenever kids say these preposterous imaginary things and you're just like oh that's very nice i like that i feel like parents are starting to lose that nowadays but it was a nice touch and pat carroll as uh, granny and when I say Pat Carroll, I mean that Pat Carroll right there. She was such a surprise as this granny. I mean, part of the surprise does come from the design, where at first you think she's kind of an old hag, but then you actually spend more than five minutes with her, and she's just as sweet and nurturing as you would want a granny to be. And that kind of plays into the don't judge a book by its cover mentality that we get not just from granny, but with Totoro, because as per usual with, with a Miyazaki movie, there is a mixture of nature and technology, but the technology is just so mundane in this. It's just Totoro learning how to use an umbrella and learning kind of how to have this childish, playful side to him once he hears the raindrops fall on the umbrella, and then he jumps to make sure the raindrops completely hammer, and he loves playing around with that. He's so grateful that humans shared a little bit of their culture with him that when he manages to share this ritual where he gets acorns to blossom into trees like the girls wanted to plant, 
it felt like it felt really compatible. It really felt like Totoro, who I'm guessing is leader of these creatures, is learning to like share nature, learning to become friends with humanity, but not in a hostile way, but a friendly way. And that just made the environmental themes in this movie a lot more subtle than most other Ghibli films. And I also really like that there's no fish out of water mentality in trying to understand each other. Totoro is very quick to understand the kids and vice versa. And I really appreciated that. Now, even though this is a slice of life story with a lot of mundane activities, there are a few scenes where nothing incredibly important to the characters happens that you kind of wonder why they're in there to begin with. For example, there's one scene where Satsuki has to bring Mei to her school, and I don't know why, that scene just always rubs me the wrong way. Maybe because the teacher, for whatever reason, has no problem dealing with another kid, even though it's technically not her responsibility. I don't know, It maybe I'm just getting too technical on that one, but it was weird. Not as weird as a, a family of three in a bathtub together naked and randomly start laughing to scare off a storm. I'm not saying... I'm not saying parents can't do that with kids. My parents did similar tricks with me when I was a kid, but we were not naked in a bathtub, and it didn't come completely out of nowhere. The timing was just really awkward on that one. But nevertheless, though, My Neighbor Totoro is considered one of the greatest Studio Ghibli movies of all time, and for good reason. The animation is beautiful. The characters are really likable. The actors do a great job. The creatures and the nature mythos that Hayao Miyazaki creates is unbelievably imaginative. That cat bus, love the design, love the don't judge a book by its cover metaphor because cat bus and Totoro have very creepy and disturbing smiles, kind of like Granny, but once you actually spend time with them, you judge them by their actions. And that's just another thing. You can have a minimal story and have so many different complex layers and themes and so much to analyze. And so many people have analyzed this movie for over 30 years, and they still are, which is fantastic. So for all those reasons, I'm going to give My Neighbor Totoro a 4.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you have seen My Neighbor Totoro, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Be sure to stay tuned for more Studio Ghibli reviews, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.